Let's find out about the yellow-footed rock wallaby. The term wallaby is not a specific genus, but more of a loose term referring to a small or medium macropod, the big ones we call kangaroos. Being a rock wallaby, they are most at home in rocky, hilly areas. They use little caves for shelter and are very adept at negotiating steep precipices and all sorts of rugged terrain. The pads on their large yellow feet are designed to grip the rock surfaces they frequently traverse. Together with all kangaroos and other wallabies, the yellow-footed rock wallaby is part of the macropod family and being a rock wallaby fall under the Petragali genus. There are two subspecies. One is in Queensland and the other is in New South Wales and South Australia. They are a social animal and are usually found in groups. They are territorial, not nomadic, so have their own stomping ground. This can be a disadvantage in drought conditions and unlike the more nomadic kangaroos, their populations are more likely to decline during these harder times due to lack of water and feed. Arguably one of the most attractive wallabies, their distinctive markings are hard to mistake with the white stripes on their cheeks, the black line that runs from their head to their back, the yellowy orange on their arms, hind legs and tail, and a ring tail with variable coloured tip ranging from white to brown. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, they were largely hunted for their fur. Luckily they were classed as protected in 1919, but this didn't stop their further decline. Since then, introduced foxes and cats have been a big problem in that they predate on the juvenile wallabies. Another big problem has been vegetation in the habitat of these wallabies being greatly diminished by mainly goats and also rabbits. If nothing was done to help them, there is no doubt that they would have eventually become extinct. Luckily, sanctuaries have been created, and controlling these feral animals has gone a long way in helping the wallaby populations to increase. These sanctuaries, conservation areas and national parks are all important refuges for this little macropod. In the early 1990s, the South Australian Department of the Environment set up Operation Bounce Back in the Flinders and O'Leary Ranges, and then later in the Gawler Ranges. Yellow-tailed rock wallaby numbers are still quite away from what a healthy population should be, but they have definitely made progress and hopefully will continue on their recovery.